Please remain standing for the national anthem. I'd like to begin this afternoon by welcoming all of my classmates, staff, parents and guardians, the school board and superintendent, friends and relatives to the 136th annual commencement for the class of 2003. Today is a juncture in our lives which we reflect on the past four years and begin anew. We begin anew, but our past will not go astray or be forgotten. Alfred Lord Tenson suggests that our past experiences will be with us forever, as he states. We are a part of all that we have met, yet all experience is an arch where through gleams that untraveled world. We will be looking forward, but the arc of experience summons us to consider, take worth, and learn from our past experiences. Thus, to fully appreciate commencement, we must remember our high school past. We are leaving many friends that we have gained or lost through the years. What is important is not that we are leaving them, but that we have created a bond that is part of each and every one of us. We have learned together, we have studied together, and laughed together, which have created memories that will not be forgotten. We're leaving teachers that have dedicated time, patience, and effort into challenging and shaping our minds. I've learned invaluable lessons from my teachers, which have helped me to grow not only as a student, uh, but as a person. Yes, we're leaving Coatter High School, the institution that has shaped and matured each and every one of us, the place where we have experienced numerous triumphs and successes. Consequently, we take our high school years, including the memories and lessons of Coldwater High School, into the future. We're now entering the next step of personal growth. We're all about to embark on our own individual and personal journeys, whether it be college, the workforce, the armed forces, travel, or other goals. We are all entering a place in our lives that is untraveled and unknown. We'll be able to successfully enter this unknown because of our arch of experience, which will guide and transform our fears into hopes, dreams, and possibilities. Keep and learn from your past, but let us, the class of 2003, as Henry David Thoreau states, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live your life, live the life you've imagined. Good luck, class of 2003, and thank you for all the invaluable memories. Class of 2003, this day closes our 13-year epic journey through the perils and triumphs 
of public education. In the process, we matured, developed opinions, and learned much more than what is taught here at CHS. We have all undergone the same stress and struggles with friends, parents, and responsibilities. We have lost friends, gained new ones, and learned firsthand the meaning of drama. Each of us has learned to compromise between parties in school, consequently, between our present situations and our futures. We have also all endured the same frustrations of living in a small time, town. Excuse me. Now is our time to get out and become the people that we want to be. As Henry David Thoreau once instructed, now is the time to, quote, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life that you have imagined, unquote. It is our time to take control of our futures and lay the foundation for a generation of success. Class of 2003, I challenge you. I challenge you to dream, to go outside your cliques, to travel the world, to meet different people and listen to their opinions, to lose all prejudice and ignorance, to never find yourself looking back, wishing you had taken a different route in life, but also to never forget where you came from and to never stop learning or compromise your self-respect. But most importantly, to always live for yourself and to have fun because you are the only person that can bring contentment to your life. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, quote, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a little better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, that is the meaning of success. Class of 2003 and CHS faculty, thank you for shaping me as I've grown, and thank you for all the love and wisdom that you've shown. There was a day 12 or 13 years ago when my mother and father, just like everyone else in this graduating class as mother and father, took my five-year-old hand and, for the first time, anxiously entrusted it into the care of a teacher. They recognized that they must share the responsibility of helping their children learn and grow with strangers who, while trained in their profession, were unfamiliar nonetheless. That moment of letting go is one of the most crucial in the relationship between a parent and a child. It is a foreshadowing to the eventual letting go that all parents must do. It starts with being without your child for half days and eventually for entire days. In the blink of an eye, we have cars and can travel even farther away from our homes until eventually it's time to go off to college and enter the real world. What parents and students discovered is that teacher describes a person who is more than an expert on a subject. A teacher is a friend and mentor, mediator and role model, nurse, coach, cheerleader and counselor, performer and disciplinarian, judge and jury. Only those students affected know the true impact of this unique relationship. In the words of U.S. historian Henry Brooks Adams, quote, a teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops, end quote. Great teachers approach each day as though what is said and done in their classroom will be of paramount influence and remembered forever, and they are right. It can't be easy either, teaching hundreds of teenagers who are smarter than you are and already know the answers anyhow. I don't think you will find one successful adult today who is not able to identify a teacher who made a difference in their lives. To all of the teachers who have positively impacted our lives, we thank you for treating our parents' life's work as though it was your own. You have our gratitude for rising above the budget cuts block scheduling, advisory duties,
committee meetings, and your own personal needs to realize and prioritize your trusted duty as a partner with our parents. We appreciate and admire your dedication. And our hope for you is that you will indeed reap what you have sown in the workers, the teachers, and leaders of tomorrow that you have helped to cultivate in the class of 2003. Thank you, teachers. To our parents for all they have said and done. Thanks be given to our parents for diapers, bottles, drool, teething, and potty training. For don't forget to wash your hands, brush your teeth, and no jumping on the bed. For what's the magic word? Don't play with your food and clean off your plate or there'll be no dessert. For Brussels sprouts, broccoli, green beans, peas, and endless glasses of spilt milk. For time out, don't make me come in there and I'm giving you till the count of three. For all the no's, the maybes, the will sees, and stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. For garbage night, dish night, and clean up your room or I'll do it for you. For reminding us, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. When I was a kid, someday you'll understand. Kids these days, it's for your own good, and you don't know how good you've got it. For wait till your father gets home. We'll discuss it later. Go ask your mother, because I said so, that's why, and end of discussion. For don't sass me. Get off the phone. Watch your language. Who do you think you're talking to? You're not going out in that. Do you have any idea what time it is, and what were you thinking? <laughs> For if you would only pay attention, when are you going to learn? And I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> and of course, thanks also for the nine months of wonder and worry, for lullabies and baby talk, for t-ball, gymnastics, and ballet, for Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny. For just this once, don't tell your mother, and it'll be our secret. For pumpkin carving, cookie making, egg dyeing, and trick or treating. For that's my boy, and you're my princess. For grass stains, after school snacks, milk money, and paper bag lunches. For sleepovers, birthday treats, and school clothes shopping. For bedtime stories, midnight snacks, and monster patrol. For tree houses, tea time, Barbie dolls, and GI Joes. For bandaged knees, mommy's here, where does it hurt? It's okay to cry, does that feel better? And you're so brave. For carpooling, chaperoning, sports, extracurricular activities. For last minute projects, can I do anything to help? Keep your chin up, and I, know you, I knew you could do it. For when did you get so big? How did you get so smart? And you'll always be my baby. For I trust you, I believe in you, you make me proud and you'll never know how much I love you. For your patience, your support, your love, your pride, your trust, for pushing us and letting us realize our full potential, for grounding us, but also letting us soar, for letting us find ourselves, but not without limits. In short, thank you parents for the discipline and the love, that we maintain that the Brussels sprouts were awful and dish night was torture, the lullabies were sweet and the band-aids somehow always made it feel better. As we go off into the world, we carry your teachings with us and wish that from our successes to come and successes already achieved, you see your own success. Thank you seems insufficient for all that you have given us, but like you make me proud and I'll always be watching, some words will always hold great value in our hearts and memories. And so, on this momentous day, we hope you realize the love and gratitude with which, with which these words are said. To the parents of the class of 2003, thank you. It's my honor at this time to introduce to you two students who have both earned a grade point average exceeding 4.08 during their four years here at Coldwater High School. Valedictorians, for the class of 2003 are Sarah Bauer and Courtney Rowe Boltnick. Come forward, ladies. The 
following students have earned a grade point average in excess of 4.05 throughout their four years in high school. Salutatorians for the class of 2003 are Stacy Reed and Emily Oppenlander. Please come forward. high school has been. So many things have happened to all of us throughout these past four years. Some of our experiences have been pleasant. Some, on the other hand, we wish would never have happened. Some we're still unsure about how we feel about them, and others we're indifferent about. One thing that's in common among all of these incidents, however, is that through all of them, we have learned something. Maybe we've learned about love, math, friendship, people, English, or just life in general. But no matter what it was, the point is that we've all learned. Whether or not we liked what we've learned is a different story. Though a significant part of our learning took place in high school, it's definitely been an ongoing process that began a long time ago. It all started when we learned how to stack blocks, tie our shoes, tell time, count money, and how to play nicely, because when you kick people, you have to miss recess, which I learned the hard way in third grade. And of course, the golden rule. As time went by and our intelligence evolved, however, we were able to comprehend more complex things, such as multiplication tables, that trying to show off usually results in embarrassment, although we may not have realized that it was embarrassing until later and that cooties are a made-up thing, so boys really aren't so bad most of the time. After we got most of the basics down, it was time for high school, which presented far greater discoveries than finding bugs under rocks or what the insides of frogs looks like. Rather, we discovered more about ourselves and what life is like, as well as a bit of academic knowledge here and there. We learned that calculus is kind of difficult and that there's just about a million ways to ask the exact same question. And that chemistry is pretty cool. And that sunscreen does serve a purpose. The high school experience taught us how to be sociable, that true friends are really hard to come by, so we need to savor the ones that we've got while they're still here. That the, if it's not interesting, just sleep through it theory doesn't always work out in the long run and that other people aren't as dependable as you'd like them to be. Most importantly, we learned that life can be hard, but it's also fun. A lot has been learned in these past years, and I'm sure that I've forgotten much that I've learned, but I'm also sure that there are some things that I'll never forget. Classmates, no matter what it is that you've learned, whether it be how to write eloquently, how to raise livestock, how to be a people person, or how to paint, use it. Take whatever you've acquired and apply it to further your education, your career, or yourself in the best way that you can. Excel in whatever it is that you can do well. And don't be afraid to try new things. Just learn from your mistakes, as I'm sure that we'll all make plenty of them. You've used what you've learned when you were young to get where we are today. Now take what you know now and use it to get where you want to be in the future. We're young and ambitious, and I hope that we all use our abilities to make ourselves great. Class of 2003, good luck. Make Coldwater proud. Satirical author Tom Robbins wrote in his novel, Still Life is Woodpecker. Choice was the word that put the free in freedom and took the obligation out of love. Those graduating made choices over the years to do the work and have experiences necessary to get here today. It was not just one choice that got us here. It was hundreds of choices ranging from which class should I take to should I really stay up all night cramming for that science midterm? 
We have found that life is full of choices. Every single day of life, we choose the type of deodorant we wear. We choose our stands on world events. We choose the socks we wear or don't wear. And most importantly, we choose who we are going to be in any given moment. Today, the choice to be here graduating is but another choice in the lives we will be living as the class of 2003. Each of us will pioneer a unique path. Every decision will offer results, desirable or not. The choice remains for us to determine how we will handle the outcomes of the choices we make in our own game of life. Robbins also noted that we are our own dragons as well as our own heroes and we have to rescue ourselves from ourselves. Sadly, the world can be a place where too many people allow themselves to abdicate their responsibility of choice and choose the life label of victim, paralyzing him or her with fear. Life becomes something that is done to them not something they consciously participate in and create. People hurt others, and bad things do happen in this world, but we all have the choice to let our fear paralyze us, or we can choose to live like there is no tomorrow and learn as if we'd be living forever. It is a choice, and it is our choice. Responsibility comes with choice, however. Shame and guilt are not the best guides for motivating us to the fullest we can be. If we are at odds with an aspect of our world, it is our responsibility, in other words, our ability to respond, to be who we are, be proud and aware of our role in making things as they are. Then accept changing and being changed as you deem necessary. This can make life all about perspective. Physicist John Gibbons, who wrote the highly acclaimed modern physics text in search of Schrodinger's cat, quantum physics and reality, states that in the world in which we live, there are no hidden variables. What you see is what you get. God doesn't play dice and everything is real. What this success is that each person's perspective is made up of their individual choice of what they observe and what they have chosen to believe about what they have observed. Their beliefs may be conscious or unconscious. It is still a valid variable to the choice of reaction to what they have observed. Erwin Schrodinger goes on to say that every man's world picture is and always remains a construct of his mind and cannot be proved to have any other existence. What this means to us is that all of our personal realities can and should be different. Oh sure, there is a consensus reality where we can all agree, for example, that our robes are red and black. But our non-consensus reality lies in our perceptions, concepts, and even our experiences of these colors. What does red feel like? And what does the symbol of black mean to you? Therefore, it can be said that my personal reality can be very different from yours. But that difference does not make anyone's reality invalid. We are all valid human beings that have choice, free will, and the responsibility that is inherent in our own realities. 
Each one of us graduating today will be someplace different tomorrow. We will take the skills learned up to today and the ability to continue learning as we form our own paths of life. But most importantly, we have the choice to create new realities and a better world. Thank you. Residential scholars are those students who have completed a stipulated course of study and additionally have demonstrated their academic ability as follows. A minimum of a 3.5 overall grade point average, a minimum score of 85th percentile on a national achievement test, uh, and having earned at least four credits in English, three credits in science, three credits in math, and four in social studies, as well as two credits in a foreign language and a half credit in computer science. This year, 13 students have distinguished themselves in this way. I would like to present to you the following presidential scholars from the class of 2003. Please rise and remain standing. Megan Alexander, Susie Brady, Megan Brown, Patrick Castle, Michael Daoud, Amy LaFountain, Michelle Marvin, Emily Mills, Amy Olmsted, Amy Plodzik, Stacy Reed, Courtney Rowe Boltnick, Brooks Snyder, Doug Steck Schulte, Nick, Nicholas Belmont Dunny, Desiree Wallen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Presidential Scholars for 2003. John Vance was a 1975 graduate of Coorta High School. We believe that he represents the highest standards of character and achievement to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. On May 25, 1982, John lost a year-long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, we the faculty of Coldwater High School honor Doug Steck Schulte, who represents the high standards John exemplified. Please come forward, Doug. students in Cold War High School. First of all, I would like to introduce them. When introduced, please stand. Anna Korfot from Sweden. And their host family, Marvin and Sue Merkel. Natsumi Atanaka from Japan. who live with Linda Elkins.
Emil Nielsen from Denmark and his host parents, Michel and Dennis Van Dusen. Silke Meinicke from Germany. Who live with Ron and Lori McLaughlin. Being an exchange student is like playing poker. You can have the best cards, but you're never sure to win. Luck doesn't matter. You can be in California with a wonderful host family, but it's not going to be a successful experience if you don't play your cards in the best way possible. That's all up to you. I first came to America when I was six years old, in vacation. I came with the eyes of a child, and I left with the dreams of a child. I fell in love with America. I created my own idea of America, a place where everything is right and everybody is good. What people in the world know about America is what they see on TV and in the movies. I'm sure that almost every exchange student comes to America with those kinds of expectations, with those kinds of dreams. When I came back last summer, America was not a blank space on a map anymore. It had got filled since my boyhood with rivers and lakes and names. It had ceased to be a blank space of delightful mystery, a white patch for a boy to dream gloriously over. Reality was different from my dreams. Freedom fries are no better than french fries. <laughs> they taste the same. And so the people. The nature of man doesn't change. The beginning was tough. Often America even became a place of darkness where you don't understand anything, you don't know anybody, you're afraid to try and most people are indifferent to you because they don't need you, but you need them. We've all been homesick, all felt not accepted, not understood. Each of us, I'm sure, in a certain point of time, asked to himself, why am I here? That's when I realized that I was wrong in my dreams. Changing nation, moving overseas, doesn't change reality, doesn't change who you are unless you want to. There are a few Americans with a great impact on my life. One of them is the cyclist Lance Armstrong. He represents for me the stereotype of American mentality, all the values I've always loved about America, the quest for perfection, the love for competition, the desire to win and to excel, the wish to never give up. After coming back from cancer, he once said, if you ever get a second chance in life for something, you've got to go all the way. This experience has been my second chance, a chance that probably most of the seniors will have in a few months going to college, an opportunity to start over, to meet new people, to grow up, to change the image of yourself, to discover new sides of your own personality, the day I stopped loving the idea of America, I started loving America. Reality is tough, tougher than dreams, but at the same time, much more rewarding. Like my compatriot, Columbus, I came looking for something else, for the wrong thing, and I found something better. I learned to appreciate life, to appreciate the little things that make a difference in your day. People smiling at me in the hallway, even if I don't really know them. A cold shower after three hours of wrestling practice. A friend give me a ride every morning. A family telling me I have the best English ever, even if I know that's not true. <laughs> the opportunity to do sport every day. People always ready to say good job, even if I just end up last in a track meet. Being an exchange student, is not just like playing poker. Because in poker, you're alone. That's you against everybody else. That wasn't my case. I had the opportunity to experience true friendship. 
and it's what made my year in America successful. I'd like to thank all the friends I have, and in particular a few of them who made me feel special, accepting me as a person in spite of my different nationality, treating me like one of them. Will Smith, Gene Gallagher, Jake Wasserman, Tommy Strang, Jonah Oglis, Nick Ross, Ian Zimmer, Doug Stexulty, Matt Sussex, and I probably forgot some of you, but I just want to thank you guys for everything you did. You will always have a place in my heart, a special place. I'll miss you. I would also like to thank the community of Coldwater for accepting and supporting our experience. Coldwater High School for giving us the same academic and athletic opportunities of any American student. All the seniors for accepting us as a part of their grade. The host families for opening their houses once again with great hospitality. I had the opportunity this year to call more than one person mom and dad. So I would like to thank all of them, the two host families I had, the Tim Hanker family, and Sarah and John Bagley, and also my dad and my twin brother, who came from Italy to be here today. Thank you.
members of the class of 2003 please rise. On behalf of the faculty and administration of Coldwater High School, I present the class of 2003 to the Board of Education, and in so doing, certify that each member has met the requirements for a diploma and is entitled to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. By the authority of the state of Michigan, vested in the Board of Education, and by them delegated to me as president, I hereby confer upon you the diploma of Coldwater High School. Will the graduates please come to the flat platform to receive your diplomas? All but the first row may please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2003. Sarah Lene Bauer. <laughs> Emily Alyssa Mills. Brooke Annette Snyder. Desiree Brianne Wallen. Patrick James Castle. Nicholas Brian Villemont Dunny. <laughs> Courtney L. Robotnik. <laughs> Stacy Lynn Reed. Tristan Alonge. Only once. Emily Elizabeth Openlander. <laughs> Michelle Kathleen Marvin. Amy Sue LaFountain. <laughs> Eric Scott Rurka. <laughs> Tiffany Sue Anderson. Silka Karina Meineke. <laughs> Kristen Joy Brewer. <laughs> J. 
Jacqueline Mary Scott. Casey Joe Warner. Ryan Anthony O'Neill. Jessica Lynn Del Sasso. Hmm? Natsumi Hatanaki. Victoria Jean Hyde. Amy Kathleen Fisher. Amelia Louise Gay. Heather Ellen Snively. Megan Marie Alexander. Amanda Lee Lang. Ashley Elizabeth Noss. Christopher Eric Parker. Michael Brian Sorensen. Adam Tyler Graff. Adam Martin Gokenauer. Michael Charles Patterson II. Luke Randall Knowles. Adam Michael Briggs. Cheryl Renee Oler. Julianne Marie Bobilia. Angela Marie Nutt. Amy Sherlyn Scott. Ashley Marie Westgate. Megan Rochelle Nutt. Danielle Lynn White. Hope Elizabeth Cole. Angela Susan Eberts. Tony Raynell Bott. Ashley, Rihanna, Janine, Shiwi. Richard, Alan, Bailey.
Stewart Lee Roberts. Nicholas Allen Rogers. Luke Nathaniel Bovee. William Stewart Smith. Nicole Hope Hats Nicolas <laughs> Danielle Charlene DeLong <laughs> Karen Renee Wilson <laughs> Ida Sue Ledford Patricia Renee Klein. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Aker. <laughs> Kristen Coriel Ketchum. <laughs> Nicole Louise Wardwell. Cammy Marie Hoffman. <laughs> Jennifer Leah Wright. <laughs> Tara Kathleen Doty. <laughs> Sherry Faye Souls. Jonathan Roberts. <laughs> Corey Michael Murphy. Jill Elizabeth Nicholson. Sarah Jean Capella. Brandon Wayne Gates. Trisha Marie Mack. Nicole Irene Rubley. <laughs> Cynthia Lee Turner. <laughs> Stacy Joe Lawrence. Amanda Marlene Faust. <laughs> Jennifer K. Garn. <laughs> Amy Joe Clark. Faith Lee Town. <laughs> Jenna Leanne Printke.
Alicia Marie Amber Hickerson. <laughs> Catherine Ann Snyder. Christina Mariella Oman. Rachel Renee Tucker. Trista Marie Poole. Anna Margareta Kortfeldt. Ashley Elizabeth Waltz. Amy Constance Plodzik. Heather Peters. Christine Marie Mock. <laughs> Margaret Laura Binkley. <laughs> Tiffany Marie Grace. Leona Faye Barnett. Woo! Eugene Patrick Gallagher. Woo! Ian William Zimmer. Woo! Aaron James Nickerson. Aaron Lee Jacobson. Anthony Dallas McMichael. Jeremiah David Vanderpile. Brian Russell Weibel. <laughs> Harley Dean McNeely. <laughs> Irwin David Stanton Jr. Charles Blake Ruge. <laughs> Wade Douglas Viney. <laughs> Russell Paul Tremblay. <laughs> Kurt Robden Meyer. Sean Michael wait, wait, wait. Hurley. <laughs> William Hal Nolan the third. John Andrew Barkley. Ryan James Walker. Samuel Patrick Brayton.
Gregory W. Link. Victoria Jennifer Cruz Donnelly. Benjamin Peter Seiler. Oscar Michael Munoz. Noah Lee Brown. Daniel James Underwood. Saeed Ali Hussein. Abdul Sattar Muslim Ahmed. <laughs> Jonah Daniel Ogles. <laughs> Nicholas James Cross. Doug Andrew Stecksholte. <laughs> Thomas John Strang. <laughs> Carrie Marie Wishmeyer. Lindsay Renee Langwell. Amy Joe Olmstead. Leslie Nicole Morrill. Alian Carmela Hughes. You'll be fine. Megan Nicole Brown. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Corliss. Jody Lee Numbers. <laughs> Kathleen Suzanne Gibson. <laughs> Lydia Ruth Hurt. Susie Ann Brady. Shane Morrison Foley. Brandon Michael Gaylor. Matthew Thomas Harris. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Hilker. <laughs> Kelly Ann Paul. <laughs> Michael Vincent Alexiak. Adam Dave.
David Sherfield. <laughs> Kenneth William Labrum. <laughs> Kent Frederick Fazek. Brandon Earl McVicker. <laughs> Emil Nygaard Nielsen. <laughs> Courtney Renee Kurtz. Catherine E. Lampman. <laughs> Destiny Lynn Smith. <laughs> Mary Amanda Schroll. <laughs> Morgan Elizabeth Johnson. Lisa Renee Avery. Joseph Nathaniel Clausen. Michael David Rogers. Ryan Benjamin Bellinger. Joseph Aaron Lewis. Eric David Taylor. Kathy Lynn Weller. Wanda K. Winwright. Donna Louise Boucher. Scott Randall Bell. This is it. Up. Aaron Wesley Sexton. <laughs> Ryan Aubrey Styles. William Avery Yearling. <laughs> Tyler Heath Schlebatis. <laughs> Anthony Todd Iraqi. Nicholas Cody Arnold. <laughs> Ryan Lee Van Stone. <laughs> Nicholas Wade Longstreet. Eric Richard Ziegler. Yeah. 
Joseph Robert Riker. Elliot Scott Tipman. Lance M. Pearson. Jason Brian Wagner. Christopher John Sadler. Nicholas Adam Pfeiffer. Andrew Allen Johnson. Benjamin Jake Cope. Kyle Austin Holt. Benjamin William Vayner. David James Hemker. Nicholas Andrew Knaus. Sean Ryan Pan. <laughs> Ashley Len Metcalf. <laughs> Jennifer Nicole Baus. Christiane Popovich. Chance Joseph Collins. Frank Joseph Russo. Richard B. Partial. Scott Andrew Renner. Paul Thomas Capella. Emily Sue Wright. <laughs> Timothy John Burke. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Bracey. Rebecca Jane Moore. Jamie Lynn Sarno. Amanda Sue Hamlin. Kelly Ann Thompson. Jacob Adam Wasserman. Brian Thomas Looper.
Michael John Daoud. Kent Tsubasa Segura. Christopher Michael DiGiorgio. Edward Crafts Lake. Justin Leroy Avery. Trevor Michael Sweet. Shane Allen Brayton. Matthew Allen Sussex. Ryan Christopher Partial. Matthew Joseph Gallio. Samuel Lee Hamminger. Alfonso Alberto. Greg Lucas Auber. Michael David McKittrick. Waylon James Sims. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2003. shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the person who will decide where to go. We have all been given knowledge by our teachers, coaches, family and friends. Everything in our lives up to this point has been preparing us for the future. When we leave here today we each have the opportunity to complete our paths that have been started for us. My only hope for the class of 2003 is that we all realize our full potential and make use of it. We, as individuals, are the only ones that can hinder our dreams. I wish you all the best of luck and congratulations to the class of 2003. Our greatest glory is not in ever failing, but in rising up every time we fail. One thing our high school career has taught us is that even though we have just accomplished, it is just the beginning. Classes are finished and this chapter of our lives is behind us, but we will continue to face many challenges and hardships. However, the class of 2003 will overcome these obstacles and aspire to great lawyers, doctors, engineers, and so much more. I am confident in my fellow graduates sitting before you today that they will become a great success by meeting any challenge that comes their way in triumphing. 
I know this because I have shared in their experiences. I too have learned things and made friends that will last a lifetime. I too shared in our failures and in the persistent effort to accomplish what many did not think we could do. We are a testament to our parents, friends, to all those who have shared in our lives. We have been powerfully and forever changed for the better as a result of the time we have been able to spend together. And I thank you all for that. I would especially like to say thank you to my parents for all the support they have given and continue to give, and to my grandparents for teaching me to be remindful always of those less fortunate than myself. So in closing, I wish the class of 2003 all of the best that life has to offer you, for you all deserve it. Good luck in all your future endeavors, and wherever your path in life takes you, heal the past, live the present, dream the future. Thank you. Members of the class of 2003, I welcome you. As alumni of Coldwater High School, please rise. Move your tassels to the left side and be presented to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2003.